Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it is going to be Castlevania Chronicles for the Sony PlayStation. Uh, yeah, this is actually a game I did a Let's Play of uh, back in 2013, many, many years ago by this point. And um, we actually played the arranged mode in that Let's Play. It's basically an easier version of the game. Um, uh, the, the difficulty has been rebalanced. There's no uh, traditional knockback where you get pushed backwards whenever you take a hit. Um, and uh, there's some upgraded visuals and things like that and remixed music. Um, so yeah, we're going to be revisiting the game with my new capture set up. Um, so hopefully everything looks sharper than the old 2013 Let's Play. Uh, but also we're going to be playing this on the original mode. Uh, so original mode is basically a port of the original Sharp X68000 uh, Akuma Joe Dracula or Castlevania um, for the X68000. It's a Japanese uh, only computer and uh, this game came out in 1993 technically on that. Uh, the Sony PlayStation version was released in 2000 or 2001 I believe. Uh, as a PlayStation release with the arrange with the sorry newly added arrange mode, which is pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and just click on original mode. Uh, but this is a great Castlevania game. Basically, what this is is a uh, it's like a retelling of the very original Castlevania from 1986, and uh, you know it features some of the same environments, some of the same music, uh, some of the same boss fights and things like that. But it's got so much new to it as well uh, that it's it's basically a brand new Castlevania game. Uh, you know, all the same. It's both a remake and a new game. Uh, it's it's very interesting in that regard. Um, so yeah, guys, this is basically the intro, um, but before I kick things off and jump right into the gameplay, uh, as usual, I want to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers. Those guys are going to flash by the screen. Thank you go, uh, thank you so much, guys, for your continued support. I really appreciate it. If you want to support this show on Patreon, uh, links are in the description box, as always. Also, I'm going to flash by the recent Super Chatters as of uh, October 9th. 2017 for the last 30 days uh, so thank you guys who uh, are patrons on my live streams which I do every Thursday night here uh, so yeah we're gonna go ahead and just jump into the game itself and I've got a couple of save files here you, you're gonna notice that uh, one of them says stage 99 and this is uh, really interesting because um, Castlevania Chronicles actually loops many, many times. So in classic Castlevania games, a lot of times you beat the game once, um, it, it'll start you up again, and the gameplay will be on a harder difficulty mode. Um, and then once you beat it there, that's it. The difficulty just caps out. But on Castlevania 68000 or Castlevania Chronicles, it loops up to five, six, or seven times or something like that. Uh, so this one right here, this save file where it says stage 99, uh, we beat the game uh, five times. And uh, my save file is actually starting off on the sixth loop. Uh, I haven't attempted to tackle the sixth loop yet, but um, supposedly there's some neat little secrets and Easter eggs you can find if you loop the game uh, more than that. Uh, there's some good information on places like the Castlevania Dungeon and, uh, you know, doing a Google search will give you some really cool information on that as well. So I suggest looking into that if you want to dive deeper into this game. Um, the higher loops are very, very interesting, by the way. There's some crazy difficulty spikes that you just don't really see in most other Castlevania um, subsequent loops, basically. Except for Castlevania 3 and the NES, that one's got some crazy stuff added to it as well. So we're going to just, just do a name entry here. What we're going to do is just basically create a new save file. And um, I'll just do GT for Gameplay and Talk, which is my channel name here. I want to just do lots of periods. And uh, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And obligatory Castlevania intro. And uh, because I was uh, looping the game recently, I don't I don't foresee us having much trouble here because I'm used to the harder loops now. And so going back and playing the very first loop uh, probably won't pose much of a challenge uh, in comparison. I mean, this game is still tough. And the reason I did the arranged mode on my original Let's Play many years ago is that it was considerably easier, and I was having a hell of a time with the arrange with the original mode. So now we now here we are, well practiced on the original mode, and uh, even though it's considerably more difficult, I, I still don't think we're going to have too much trouble here. So as you can see, this is basically a recreation of the original hallway from the very first Castlevania, and here's the uh, the Panthers. 
Um, which I guess they weren't really, they didn't really look like Panthers in the original NES game. They looked more like, uh, I don't know, dogs or, or something like that. Some of the same secrets are still here as well, but some of the, uh, the old secrets have been... They're still there, but they're, they're different in a way, and I'll show you what I mean uh, in one of these upcoming sections here. Uh, what I'm gonna try is actually grinding out for extra lives uh, on this first section. We'll see if it works. It might not. It's gonna, it's gonna depend, really. Uh, ooh, look at that! We got the herb immediately! I could cheese the game and just, just keep the herb. So the herb is a, uh, it's a new item that you get in Castlevania Chronicles, and uh, it uses up ten hearts, and it refills about five or six blocks of your health. And, um, so right now I've got forty hearts, and I could basically use it four times. So let me take a hit here, and I just press up and attack, and it uses it. So here's one of the, uh, traditional secrets I was talking about that is now different. It's got hunchbacks just constantly spawning, and they will overwhelm you. Um, but so many of them pop out so quickly, it's actually a really good grind spot for extra lives, and... I was wondering why they put this here, and I was thinking about it, I was like, man, this game is so difficult, and if you get a game over, you gotta go back to the beginning of each level. Like, m maybe they put this here as, you know, to troll the player, the player that was familiar with the original game, because this came out, um, seven years after the original Castlevania did, you know, it's a remake that came out seven years later, and... Um, maybe they also put it here because they knew the game was hard, and they wanted to get the player a couple of places throughout the game to grind out for extra lives, so... That's exactly what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna grind out for these lives. And, uh, yeah, there's actually about, uh, three different places in the game you can grind out for extra lives if, uh... If you know how to do it, what I'll do is I'll, I'll sort of point those parts out as we get to them, but what I'd rather do is just grind here in the beginning and just pick up my lives here, so we can just skip the uh, the later grind uh, areas. Now, it's very, very difficult to do this if you're on a subsequent loop. So if you're on loop 2 or 3 or higher or something like that, um, the bats fly across the screen like they've got jet engines attached to them or something. So, it's very difficult to just sit here and grind out on these hunchbacks, because the bat will just fly down and nail you, and uh, then these guys will come out, they'll gang up on you and, uh, you'll die very quickly. So there we go, we've already got two lives. So we'll go ahead and get one more or so, just, uh, just because we can. So what's kind of neat about this part is, uh, if, if you guys have seen my original NES Castlevania Let's Play, you'll notice that the barrier here is much taller. Um, from what I can tell, there's basically no way to damage boost over this like you can in the original Castlevania. So there's there's areas like that that have been made taller or wider, um, so you can't just, you know, exploit the, uh, you know, the, the small environments like you could in the original Castlevania on the, uh, the NES. So that's neat. It's really neat revisiting uh, these old locations and whatnot. And on this next extra life, what we're going to do is just press forward, because our time is also running out. That's one of the downsides to doing this. Um, but let's go ahead and come over here. I wanted to show you this, which is, this is the actual location of the wall meet. So in the original Castlevania, that's where the wall meet is. So let's come down these stairs. There we go. But it's okay that I took hits, because one of the enemies dropped the herb, and I just got all my health back from that. So we got extra lives, we, we've got our life back and uh, all is well. What I'm going to do is actually show you another little exploit that you can do. It's not really an exploit, so to say. Um, it's just using a specific item on a very specific boss. So if you're having trouble with this game, part of what this playthrough is going to be is, unless I screw up and die, is to hopefully show you the easier way through the game. So if you're really having a hard time with this game, you're going to want to... Ooh, never mind, I can't show it to you now. Because an enemy just dropped an axe. Um, actually, that's not entirely true. I can actually go back. Yep, I should be able to go back, just like this, and pick up that stopwatch again. Pending I don't get hit by one of these guys. Or run out of time. There we go. We got it again. Now let's hope we can get to the boss without running out of time. Because remember, I already spent a bunch of time trying to uh, grind out on some enemies. So I forgot that, and I always forget this when I play the, a lot of the Castlevania games, is that 
you know, if you go off screen and then go back on, um, the candles reappear. There's also a little secret up here. You can walk all the way back if you want to, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, the candles will actually reappear if you go off screen. Like, say you go down a stairwell onto a new screen, um, and you go back, uh, the candles will reappear. So if there's a special item you want, uh, it's actually not over. Yeah, it'll actually reappear uh, when the candles reappear as well. So crossing my fingers, 50 seconds is enough. I think it will be enough. So what we're gonna do is just come up here. We're gonna use the stopwatch. Just like this. And we're gonna have to wait for this guy to reform. We're probably gonna take a hit in the process. And there we go. Now what I'm going to also do is I'm going to try to keep this stopwatch throughout this next level as well because you can actually use it on the second boss. And I know when people play Castlevania Chronicles, they have a they have a really hard time with the second boss in particular. And I don't blame them. When I first played this game, uh, the boss of level 2 was definitely sort of my first major roadblock. And Castlevania Chronicles, especially in the original mode, um, you will have many roadblocks for you. I don't I don't care, you know, who you are or what kind of player you are, you will probably experience trouble with this game uh, just learning it. There's the bat down here you want to try to attack. Um, otherwise, he'll just start flying at you once you fall down. Uh, but yeah, this is a tough game. This is uh, easily one of the toughest Castlevanias in, in the entire series, uh, especially on the default difficulty mode. So your first loop, basically. On your first playthrough, um, this is easily one of the toughest in the series. I would say this and the, uh, you know, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse, North American version in particular. Um, those are the hardest Castlevanias to, to learn, I'd say, on a first loop. Um, and then as far as subsequent loops are, are concerned, um, I would still probably put, uh, Dracula's Curse as the hardest. Uh, the hardest second loop. Um, but this gets more and more difficult. Um, so maybe it's sixth or seventh loop is comparable to the uh, the second loop of Dracula's Curse. Now there are some things that are much harder, uh, you know, in this game, on its subsequent loops than Dracula's Curse. But Dracula's Curse on the NES has a couple of things up its sleeve that makes it very, very difficult, such as uh, um, such as an, an arrangement of the Medusa head concept, and so the Medusa heads we're going to experience in the next stage. Um, most of you guys that are familiar with Castlevania will already know what those are, but for those that aren't familiar with it, uh, just stay tuned and you'll see what I mean. Um, but they're changed up on the on the Castlevania 3 second loop. They turn into these skulls. Uh, which are only in the North American version, by the way. Uh, so the North American version was intentionally made harder. And, um... And these skulls, they bounce around at a completely, uh, unpredictable rate. Uh, whereas the Medusa heads are predictable. Uh, so a lot of people like to complain about how tough the Medusa heads are, but the reality is, they, they bounce around the screen at a very set pattern. And uh, let's see if I can get this. I always there we go. We got it. Awesome. So this is a secret area here. You can pretty much bash down this wall, and then uh, that guy will come out. And you can try to pick an item. Um, it's a little tough to pick the one you want. I still haven't quite figured it out yet. So let's see if we can jump on this. There we go. And this is pretty much going to be the last section on this stage. And uh, we're going to actually take it easy here. So you want to come over here and just destroy this guy right there, which makes the water rise, like so. And you're going to find that the, the raft gets hit by these uh, these rocks. You want to make sure you don't slide off the raft. If you want to, you can also down whip. It's actually something I haven't really explained yet, but uh, similar to Castlevania 4, you can whip in multiple directions. These guys have a tendency of shooting at your level, so it's good to just whip like that. Uh, you can also duck them, which is nice. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use the stopwatch on this guy. So he's going to come up. You can hit him twice, I think, before he attacks you.
And that is the way to take that guy out. That's actually the first time uh, I've gotten there with the stopwatch. Um, either I die or, um, you know, I get hit by enemies that, you know, drop items and their item overrides the one in my inventory. Um, things like that. Things can just definitely <laughs> not go in your favor in this uh, this game. It's There's a lot of uh, randomized elements to it. Uh, and... Uh, you know, even if you've got the perfect setup, just one little tiny mistake can put you on something that's going to just completely change the course of the rest of the game. Um, so we're on stage uh, three. And uh, there's going to be an item here. We're actually going to pick up the herb again. Uh, so we actually, I already got the show off the herb in the beginning, um, thanks to luck. But uh, there's going to be another herb on this level. And what I'm going to try to do is carry it through um, basically the rest of the game. And, uh, so if you're having problems with this game, I suggest trying to do the same thing. And, uh, I'll just sort of, uh, show you how I go about things. Now, what's actually really interesting about these guys, um, is on subsequent loops, when they drop, they actually drop toward you. So they, they actually drop at an angle, so they become much more aggressive, there becomes much more of them, they become faster. Um, but this is basically, like, the, the harpy slash, uh, you know... Flea Man or Hunchback uh, design from the very first game. So in the very first Castlevania, they actually weren't harpies. They were harpies in later Castlevania games. Uh, in this one, they're birds, just like the very first Castlevania. In the very first Castlevania, they're not harpies. They're just birds dropping these hunchbacks. And uh, you gotta watch out for those guys popping out of the trees. So I try to take the, uh, the trees a little bit slow. Um, I try to, you know, walk into them slowly, then then back out quickly in case they pop out. I try to play it safe. These little bubble things you can just whip. There's gonna be a couple of guys with shooting arrows at you. And, uh, what I could do is use my stopwatch, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna come up here like this and attack this guy. Now, if you're hungry, if you're feeling like you need some help, there actually is some wall meats right here. But unfortunately... Okay, they just respawned. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, but my health was full, so I wasn't able to consume it, but that's okay. And if I wanted to, I could just use my... Um, I really could just use my stopwatch. And actually, I might do that right here. Because I want to kill this guy, I want to avoid his arrows, and I also want to get that heart there. So that candle actually featured a big heart. So in Castlevania, hearts are your ammunition. You've got small hearts that give you one heart, you've got big hearts, and they give you five hearts. And that candle in particular always has a big heart in it. So, I'm always uh, keeping tabs on my hearts in this game. There's probably going to be a frog here, yep. And we're going to go ahead and just use the stopwatch, because he can be a bit of a pain. Same with that guy. And we're going to use the stopwatch. Oh, he's going to sink to his death. That's very nice. That doesn't usually happen. So yeah, I'm always looking at my hearts because my hearts are my ammunition. Oh, here he comes. He's coming back up. Look at that. That's funny. So if you fall uh, off the screen um, in that, you know, the quicksand or the mud or whatever you want to call it, um, you die. So I'm actually really surprised that the enemy didn't die. So I'm going to try to kill him, because I need to come over here. This is where our herb is. And this is going to make life so much easier. I'm going to go ahead and just use the stopwatch again. And there we go. Let's see if we can get him to bounce over here. And I can probably kill him when he comes down. Okay, it doesn't look like he wants to. We need to keep jumping here. It's very easy to fall off the, uh, the bottom of the screen. I'm going to get that heart, because it's going to put me at 20 hearts. Oh, I missed it. But there's another one. That's okay. So there's a crow up there. What's funny about that area, you notice that one crow. It's not really a threat. But on every loop, they add another crow. Um, so, you know, when you're on your fourth loop, there's four crows up there. Basically indicating what loop you're on. And, um... Because I beat the game five times, I saw up to five crows. So, it's going to be really interesting to go through with the sixth loop and see if uh, that crow, the sixth crow, is there. So, some really neat little uh, Easter eggs. There's going to be a stopwatch over here, which I'm not going to use because I want to keep my herb. I can basically refill my health partially three times. 
And something to keep in mind, this is a tricky part right here on your first time. If you try to run through this, you'll die. Guaranteed. So you need to trigger it, get off of it, and then jump back on it, like so. And this guy right here, he's just gonna pop up when you get close. You just want to attack him and kill him. And then when we jump over here, there's gonna be a bat that flies our way. And we want to make sure that we just attack this bat immediately. I've gotten caught on that section many times. There's a candle right there for another heart. Look at this, we can use the herb four more times. And sometimes you can attack some blocks here. And some bats. And so we got more hunchbacks. Yeah, one of the things that happens in this game is hunchbacks can hide in uh, hidden blocks. Not hidden blocks, but they can hide within blocks, is probably what I should have said. So yeah, like I was mentioning earlier, this does have a uh, an air whip mechanic. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot aim the whip up when you're uh, standing up, but if you're jumping, you can either do it downwards, just by holding down an attack, or do it diagonally, which you just do diagonally down forward and attack, just like so. Uh, it's actually not as useful as what you get in, say, Super Castlevania 4, but, I mean, really, nothing is in the Castlevania series. But it is still useful, nonetheless. Uh, for one, it's a way to attack things below you while still keeping your, your movement and momentum. Um, it's a way to sort of poke your whip through uh, floors like this. Like, if I time this right, I can actually kill these skeletons. You can see how the whip is going through the bottom of the floor. So, with some clever use of your whip, uh, it is entirely possible to kill enemies below you, below whatever flooring you're on. So I can use the herb five times. So this is great. Great safety net. And it's actually really important on this guy, because on this guy, on later loops, he can take away your hearts. And he's a little high up right now. Oh, he looks like he still takes away your hearts in the first loop as well, but just not that many. I'm gonna go ahead and use one herb. This is actually probably the easiest boss in the game, aside from the very first bat boss. I mean, he's got a few different patterns. When this guy comes out, he just spews, uh, you know, his projectile beam that way. And... What we want to do is, if he's really high up, you want to hope that he does the attack where... You know, these columns are, you know, propelled upwards. That'll propel you upwards as well. Uh, there's no way to get crushed or anything like that in the ceiling, so it's not really an offensive attack. It's just an attack that can either get in your way if you're on the ground, um, or they, they can propel you up so you can get a good hit on him. And uh, what's actually good about not using my herb is that, um, you know, all those hearts get converted into points so that, that you know, 40-something uh, hearts was almost like 4,000 points or something like that. It's like 100 points per heart or something. Um, and uh, points like that are good. You get points from extra lives in this game. And uh, so, yeah, the, one of the big reasons why I wanted to get the herb and I wanted to show you this strategy is that um, as long as you play well and you don't die, um, your items carry over from level to level in this game. So, it's it's not like other games, uh, not necessarily Castlevania games, but not other action games where if you've got items, um, they'll, they'll go away, you know, between stages. Um, we're gonna go ahead and actually use the herb there. So I took a couple of unnecessary hits, so I just want to keep my health up. And these are the Medusa heads I was talking about, so if, you're, if you <laughs> happen to be here and not be uh, familiar with the Castlevania game, which I'm sure is, uh, I'm sure you're probably in the minority, because I do a lot of Castlevania videos on this channel. Um, those are the Medusa heads, and I'm just going to go ahead and skip those hearts. I could, really when I play this, I try to get every single heart I can get if I have the herb. Like, if I picked up those two extra single hearts, uh, I would have had ten hearts. And I actually intentionally skipped that last candle because it's actually a dagger, and I don't want the dagger. Uh, the dagger is actually a useful weapon. It's often misconstrued as being a useless weapon, but it's actually, you know, far from the truth. Uh, it's a long-range projectile, and that can be very, very useful. Uh, I'm coming over here. This is basically that secret walkthrough wall. And uh, I want to come over here because there's wall meat. Not really wall meat, I guess you can call it candle meat now. 
but uh, I typically have to jump and attack it and then maneuver myself to land uh, at the bottom of that stairwell. And if you're trying to play with weapons, here are some extra weapons. Uh, you can pretty much just pick whichever one you want. And there's a big heart right there. So we've got 29 hearts. Uh, one more heart will give us another use on our uh, herb, which is great. So we're at also nearing the parts. Uh, one of those other parts where we can grind out enemies for extra lives, and I'll sort of just just demonstrate that for a few moments, just to show you how much these guys can build up. So this statue here basically keeps bleeding out these red skeletons, and red skeletons in the Castlevania series. Uh, basically can't be killed for the most part. There is an exception in Castlevania 3 for the NES where if you have Sypho you can freeze them and uh, then attack them and then they basically just go away. They're dead for good. Um, but in some of the Castlevanias like Bloodlines or Castlevania 4 or this game in particular, uh, the Red Skeletons give you points. Um, they don't give you points in every Castlevania game, but in these ones they do. And in this one you can see how much they're bunched up. They just keep spawning, and they keep spawning. Some of them will fall off this platform, but for the most part, they just keep coming. And you can look at my score and just really see how fast it's going up. And every 50 or 70,000 points or so or something like that is an extra life. I forgot the exact, uh, you know, the exact pattern of extra lives, um, but that's... I think that's how it worked in the original Castlevania. It was something like 50,000 for the first, 70,000 for the next. Or maybe I'm thinking Castlevania 3, I don't remember. Um, so yeah, you can just sit here and just use this to grind out extra lives. If you're having a hard time, and you don't want to go back to the very beginning of the level, if you don't beat a boss in your first try, or third try, or fifth try, uh, you can sit here and grind out as many lives as you can. And uh, that's enough. I think you guys get the point. It's gonna be bats all over this place. And for these guys, you can just come down here and just whip downward. That's kind of what I was talking about. This is where, like, your down whip can be uh, can be fairly useful. We took a hit. We almost lost our uh, herb as well. I almost got knocked into that stopwatch. Now, we're probably going to be using our herb in this next section. The next section, to me, is one of the toughest in the game. Um, just because of how they position certain enemies. I'm going to duck right here, just like in the very first Castlevania. And we're just going to come up these stairs. You can see how areas of the game are very similar to what they are in the first Castlevania, but they're also restructured. So, in the original Castlevania, You've got bone pillars up here, the guys that, you know, the bony columns that shoot fireballs at you. Um, they're not here in the section. Instead, you've got, um, you know, these blades that, that move around in a circular fashion. You have to jump and duck. Jump over them and duck under, under them. Uh, but this is what I was talking about. you got these skeletons up top, and unless you've got the axe, uh, it's very difficult to avoid these guys. So what I'm going to do is just use my herb. I can use the herb four more times, unless I get a couple more hearts, which uh, I pretty much will. Now, the next uh, tough part is this guy right here. This guy gave me hell back in the day. Um, but you basically just kill them li like that. Um, what I used to do is actually walk over the right side edge and just fall all the way down. But what I do now is, since I'm playing with the herb strategy, I just tank. Um, because... There's wall meat right here, so I've got my health all the way back. Now, Medusa is a very difficult boss fight. Um, uh, she's got very erratic patterns, but there's a couple of things you can do. For one, get a free hit here, which she does that attack. And this attack, you can just stand in place, walk up, get a couple of hits, move back, wait for this attack, just like that. Hopefully, she stays in place. If, uh, if she wants to be a, uh... Yeah, if she wants to be a pain, she can actually start dashing right at you, kind of like this. But honestly, it doesn't matter. I can use my herb four more times. So, it, I mean, I could take my way if I really wanted to, but I want to kind of show you how to deal with Medusa. Because this was easily one of the worst fights for me. And there we go.
So unlike the first Castlevania, Medusa is not a cakewalk in this game. Medusa is not a cakewalk, and you're going to find that with a lot of the bosses in the game. Uh, they are not cakewalks in this game, but what you will find is that once you figure out their pattern, they are a lot more controllable than they seem, uh, including uh, the boss of this upcoming stage. This boss really gave me trouble. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep the herb. We're gonna keep playing the herb strategy. I'm gonna still try to show you how to defeat the bosses normally, um, but I wanna show you that using the herb can really make life easy, assuming you don't die. That's the only That's the only thing, is you have to not die, because if you die, uh, you lose your herb. And uh, thus that strategy uh, kinda goes out the window. So you got two different paths you can take here. You can go up that uh, left elevator side. What I prefer doing is going up this right-hand side. Uh, you got Medusa heads to deal with and whatnot, but this side is much safer. So uh, you just want to take your time, come up and kill these guys. You know, in Castlevania Chronicles, you've got a lot of time on your hands. You can, you know, one of the biggest keys to surviving in this game is just taking your time. And that's how it is in most Castlevania games. Most Castlevania games give you plenty of time to work with. Yes, you have a timer. Yes, it can start to run out if you if you take too long, but usually it it doesn't. You know, you've usually got enough time to do your thing and just take things slow. Like these Medusa heads, they bob up and down, up and down. It's a very simple pattern, but so many people have trouble with the Medusa heads. You see, up and down, up and down. I can just let them just go under me if I want. I don't, I don't have to panic when I see them. A lot of people panic when they see the Medusa heads in this game. Uh, take your time. Take your time. And that goes for pretty much any Castlevania that you play. Uh, a lot of people have trouble with the series. Um, but the thing about the Castlevania series is they're not really... They're not really as hard as they are just, you know, requiring discipline. And I think that's what a lot of people lack when they play a lot of these old-school action games, is they, they lack the discipline. Um, you know, they want to get in, they want to run and gun, they want to just go, 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 but... That's not how uh, a lot of these games work. Some of them can work that way if you're really good at them. Like the first Castlevania, I can just blaze right through. But if you're learning the game, you don't have to rush through it. And this part is tough right there. You want to duck under that and then jump. And then a lot of times there's a Medusa that, that will always greet you on the other side. Uh, there was also a uh, boomerang or cross there as well, which, you know, if you don't have the herb, it's really good to know. There's a little secret right here. If you stand in here for a short period of time, an extra life pops up. And somebody told me about that on one of my live streams of this game, so that was very, very helpful, especially when I was having trouble with this stage. Um, there's going to be a hunchback that's going to bounce over here, just like so. And uh, the reason I know that, and he's going to respawn too, just like that. And the reason I want to do this is so I can get this big heart right here. Look at that, now we can use the herb four more times. And that's why taking your time is really important. Take your time in this game, just take your time. Now there are some tight jumps later on in the game, so you've got to watch out for that. And this right here demonstrates uh, one of the new mechanics. There's basically these gears that fall down. Um, they basically just pop out of nowhere. They always pop out at the same spots, so they, you know, you learn where they're located. Even on subsequent loops, there's more of them. There's gonna be one right here. And if I wanted to, I could, I could whip it, and it, it goes down the stairs like that, and there's an axe if you really need it. Of course, I don't need the axe. But I wanted to just show you that it was there. So, to the far right here, you'll notice a uh, pattern of five candles. And there's also a peeping eye up here. And if you want to, in this wall to the right is wall meat. But I don't need it, so I'm not going to get it. But to show you, there's a bunch of weapons there. A lot of times there's a Roman numeral. And up here, another one of those peeping eyes is going to come down. He's in the top left-hand portion. You can just trigger him like that. And you'll notice that another gear popped out, but it, it fell down, fortunately, so I don't have to deal with it. See, this is where the whole taking your time thing really comes into play, and that guy always pops down. And sometimes, and I think there's one right here, yep, there it is. 
and I'm not gonna worry about that big heart. We've got we've got plenty of hearts already, um, and I think that's actually no. There's one more gear that pops down. So it's gonna pop down right here, just like so. I'm just gonna jump. Again, take your time. Another big heart. Uh, we're probably gonna take a hit here. Yeah, I had a feeling that was gonna happen. I sort of like, I sort of, uh, oh, another gear right there. I always forget about that one. And I think that's it for the gears, actually. That's, that. yeah, that's all of them. Oh, so those things only take four hits right now. They normally take five hits on later loops. All right, so this is the werewolf. This is a very tough boss, but basically what happens is the werewolf grabs objects and throws them at you. First, he starts on the right side, then he bounces over to the left, like so. And so what we're gonna wanna do is basically just follow the werewolf from one side to the next, just like so. I'm gonna use our herb. And then as his final panic attack, he grabs uh, one of the clock arms. Which is pretty funny, actually. Uh, he can be extremely ex aggressive, or she. It looks like a chick, but when it turns into a werewolf, is it still a she? I don't know. Um, yeah, he, he, he or she will grab the clock arm and just, just come after you. Um, and the clock arm pattern has a couple of different things that could happen, too. But that's that's the core gist of it. Uh, the boss always starts on, off on the right, bounces to the left, bounces back to the right. Um, after a few times of doing that, he'll start grabbing the actual numbers on the clock and grabbing those. And that's a little more unpredictable for me. So, but you really want to get control over a lot of these boss fights. You need to know the general patterns if you don't want to have a hard time. Because these bosses, you'll notice they're super fast in this game. Um... Castlevania Chronicles has the fastest bosses in pretty much any Castlevania game ever. Um, you know, a 2D Castlevania game, I should say. Uh, but you're also one of the slowest, uh... <laughs> you're one of the slowest vampire killers in this game. Um, compared to other Castlevania games. So that is something to keep in mind. So the bosses are fast, you're slow, which makes it extra difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and use that herb, because we had 10 hearts. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have an herb for this next section, because I'm, I'm down to one heart. Two hearts now. So when I'm playing this game, I'm always thinking about, okay, I'm looking at my hearts, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, how many more times can I use the herb? Or, or whatever power I've, I've got. You know, if I've got a stopwatch, it uses up like six hearts or something like that. So this part is quite tricky, you just need to keep moving. And we just lost our herb, which is going to make the rest of the game a little challenging, but that's okay. I like a good challenge. Especially when I have 10 lives in my reservoir. But I'm going to go ahead and just try to pick up all the hearts I can. So, you know, I've actually had that happen where I, I got hit by the Medusas, but I was damage boosted high enough up to where I still landed on the platform. Uh, but that didn't happen. Uh, I still fell to my death, unfortunately. Now, throughout the course of the game, there's actually some hidden, um, hidden money bags. So one of them is right here. You just duck right here. It's a little difficult to go up and get it in time, but... You know, it's one of the fun things about this game, it's just like the first Castlevania, there's there's lots of hidden goodies and things like that, that, uh, that you can get. So I'm gonna fall down here, there's actually a cross. Just like so. And let's try not to die here again. I personally find it's better to just jump over them, if you can. And uh, if you really want to attack them, try to just, you know, downswipe when you're above them. There we go, and I think we got it. Yep, that's it. Yeah, lots of tough sections in this game that, you know, unless you know how to deal with them exactly the right way, uh, you're probably gonna die trying to learn this game. It's just a very, very challenging game. So this section is a vertical section. You got a lot of little, little these like little toy guys. You've got these toy dolls. 
demon toy dolls, I should say, and you've got these bats that, that float, float around too. Unfortunately, I picked up the axe, um, which is useful in this section, but I actually prefer to have the cross overall. I think it's more useful on certain boss fights. Um, the axe is still a great weapon, though. There's certain bosses in particular, like, like death. Like, you can just wreck death with the axe. It just seems to work really well on him. But, uh, having the axe can be good on this section, because you can attack these dolls from down below. And normally the dolls can be a bit of a pain to deal with. And, you know, I just realized since I... I don't have the herb anymore, I'm gonna actually focus on getting some of these, uh... You know, hidden wall meats. So one of them is actually right here. We want to actually jump down and fall down to so this platform to the left. We want to actually fall down past it while attacking that piece right there. If you land right next to it and then attack it, uh, you actually have no way to get down in time uh, to get the wall meat. It's kind of a troll design. You know, this game definitely likes to troll you. The developers were definitely thinking like, ha ha ha. Let's take the the classic Castlevania conventions and and tip it on its nose, and that's gonna really screw with the players. And trust me, on a first time playthrough, uh, it can be really frustrating if you're really familiar with the original Castlevania and you're expecting certain niceties that you know, you know, easy to attain wall meat. Nope. Uh, much of it is difficult to attain obtain in this one. It requires a greater level of um, uh, knowledge, and it in requires a greater level of skill in, in, you know, in terms of execution as well, so... Um, there's a reason that a lot of higher level players really enjoy Castlevania Chronicles. Uh, wow, really? All the way down like that? See, that was my fault. Um, but high level players really enjoy this one because it's got a greater skill ceiling than, um, other Castlevania games do. Um, you know, personally, I would just put, I would put Castlevania 3 either on the same level as this, or maybe even a step above it, just barely, in the skill department, um, the skill required department. Um, actually, maybe even, I don't know, I wanted to think about that more, I wanted to dwell on that, that thought, but those are by far, uh, the Castlevania games that require the greatest level of skill to make the most out of, especially on subsequent loops. Um, but that's why so many like higher level players really enjoy this game. They're even even the little secrets like your wall meat, you know, require more to get the most out of. Um, they require that extra level of knowledge and skill. The great thing about this game is though, even though it, it really helps to have more knowledge and be more skilled, it is still a fun game that I think even more casual Castlevania fans can enjoy. Uh, it will end up being frustrating, for the most part, I'm sure, after a certain point. Um, but that's also what a range mode is for. A range mode is basically the easy mode of the game. So when you take a hit on a range mode, like, let me demonstrate it. Notice how I just got knocked back there. Well, that doesn't happen in a range mode. In a range mode, you just get knocked straight up. So that really, there's no... There's no endless pit risk when you get hit, um, on the range mode. And actually, what I want to do is see if there is uh, another weapon I can get here. If there's like a dagger or something like that. I don't think there is. There it is. Now, the reason I want that is because I don't remember, but I, I feel like this boss might actually use the same weapons as you. So basically, you fight a doppelganger. And, uh, in the X68000 version, supposedly if you loop the game a ton of times, a secret message appears here in this wall. Um, I looped this version five times, uh, someone on the Castlevania dungeon said that that secret is in this version, but there was a screen screenshot attached that was for the actual 68000 version, not the Castlevania Chronicles version. You could tell because, you know, the text, like, the, the quality of the sprites is not quite as detailed as it is in this one. The colors don't pop as much either. So... Alright, so doppelganger time. What I'm gonna do is just sit here and whip him, and we're gonna try to just get in, into a circular loop. Yes, and that is why I wanted the dagger, because I knew he was gonna use the projectiles, just like so. And we're just gonna get him down like this. And just constantly go back and forth, like so.
And if he had the axe, he would be able to hit me. Uh, so that is why I wanted to switch up my weapon. Normally I get here with the, uh, the herb. And having the herb actually makes life easier on this boss. Because he doesn't use the herb. It, you know, I thought I was a genius when I got here the first time with the herb. I was like, oh man, I can just refill my health. But then it dawned on me, I was like, oh no, he can use my weapons. But the catch with the herb is he doesn't use the herb if you have the herb. So it makes the boss fight even easier because he doesn't have any sub weapons he can use. But if he's got the dagger or the cross or the uh, holy water or, or the axe, he can use those on you and make the boss fight harder. So making really good progress throughout the game, we've got two more levels. Basically this level, which is a recreation of Death Stage, and then we've got Dracula's level. Dracula's level is mostly brand new, actually, whereas Death Stage uh, follows much of the same formula as the original from the first Castlevania. Um, Dracula's level is brand new for about 90% of it. Uh, which is kind of interesting, so you guys will see what I mean. Those of you familiar with the original Castlevania will see what I mean once once we get there. So this guy is popping out right here. You just want to attack him as quickly as possible. He takes five or six hits. And, you know, the holy water is not something I really use all that often in this game. I just don't find it's got that same use uh, as it does in the original Castlevania. It is still powerful, but it just doesn't go very far. It doesn't stay out very long. Um, it's also kind of like Rinky Dink in terms of like the sound effects it, it has and things like that. I just prefer to have my other other weapons. This guy you want to smack three times, and the third time he bounces forward like that. And when he bounces forward like that, you can just duck under him. He just walks right over you. And just ignore those guys on the bottom. Of course, since I've got the dagger, look at that. See? It's still useful. Again, Castlevania is not a game that you've got to rush at. You know, you can you can snipe enemies from across the screen. That was one of the beautiful things about this game back in the day. And it still is. It's just you've got flexibility on how to attack different scenarios. You know, the, the various scenarios in the game. Do you want to snipe from a distance, or do you want to get up close with your whip? You know, I could have sat down here and just used my projectile like this. But I chose to just go in with the whip. I'm gonna go ahead and just tank through these guys. And also, if you see a door like that, that's a new checkpoint. And, you know, once you hit that checkpoint, it's behind you. So, you know, you don't have to sit there and attack and kill every enemy, too. This guy falls down from the ceiling, I always want to kill him first. I'm going to duck right here. And if you grab this heart right here, he actually respawns. So what I do is I just sit here, wait for him to jump back down. It's little things like this that'll really catch you off guard in this game. You know, the constantly respawning enemies. You just want to jump rope over these. I'm going to grab this heart right here, but there's actually is a little secret down here. We're just going to walk straight down here. Bust open this wall for some wall meats. And we're gonna kill both those red skeletons so we don't get hit by them. Uh, this part too, these will trigger if you get close to them, like so. So you want it to trigger and then um, just walk past it as it falls down. Now these things aren't timed uh, evenly. Ooh, took a hit, that's not good. And there is a big heart there, but I'm not gonna need it. So for those of you guys that have played the first Castlevania, um, you know, a lot of these parts will look familiar. Um, you know, all those traps are new, but like this section right here is basically the same. Uh, in the original Castlevania, this would be your checkpoint. You'd walk through the door right there. Now there's gonna be an ax right here. We're gonna go ahead and just pick it up and we're probably gonna keep this for the rest of this stage. And, uh, as far as grinding out for extra lives, this is actually one of the other parts you can do it on. It's basically the last part you can do this on. So, there's a bunch of red skeletons. I try to get them, you know, bunched up together, like so. So 
So just get them all over to one another, like this. Yeah, you can just keep attacking them if you want to. We've got 12 lives, so I don't really need to uh, demonstrate it further. And if those were actual enemies that did die uh, in one hit, um, I would have gotten a ton of bonus points for that, because when you um, combo enemies with a, uh, a single special weapon attack, uh, you get extra points for doing so. So this guy, you want to kind of like walk over, and then duck and just attack him. When he does his chain attack, uh, it won't hit you. Now this guy could be a major pain, uh, especially on subsequent loops. For one, he, when he explodes in subsequent loops, you'll actually take damage, uh, which is bad. But also, he speeds up and he takes uh, more hits to kill. So he's just very, very difficult. I prefer to just have the herb when I get to that guy, if at all possible. So these little guys bust out of these, uh, you know, these glasses. They got these projectiles, they mainly shoot vertically. You just want to duck and to duck to take them out. And we've got a lot of hearts. Let's hope that we can, uh, we can keep our sub-weapon. Um, there is some wall meat above, just like in the original Castlevania. And I'm gonna try to take out that red skeleton, just like so. Because I have to come up here. Oops. Oh, that's not good. That's gonna put me in a bad position. The reason I say that is I need pretty much all my health to deal with death, uh, effectively. Death is still one of the toughest boss fights in the game, without a doubt. And part of that is also the checkpoint. So just like the original Castlevania, the checkpoint is at the bottom of this, this screen. So that, that door we came through. Um, and you've got to go through what's arguably one of the toughest sections. Um, for a lot of people anyway. It's not really the toughest for me anymore. But I remember this section on the original Castlevania NES game was really tough as a kid. So these guys have shields, by the way. If you actually hit them um, on the unshielded area, you'll actually kill them much, much faster. Um, but the thing is, they have a good uh, chance of blocking your attack. It would actually be really funny if one of these Medusa heads just dropped an herb. <laughs> Probably not gonna happen. It is possible, but it's probably not gonna happen. Alright, well, let's see if we can do this. It's all about that boss pattern. So, Death is just gonna come over to the right. I'm gonna just axe him. And he's probably gonna throw his uh, sickle, just like that. And that is why the axe is awesome. Well, good first fight. Good first fight. I was actually expecting to die there, but... If I don't use a special weapon when he does that portal attack, basically what it does is it sucks in your special weapon. And I was kind of experimenting there, because I noticed the axe was still sort of like bouncing up and doing damage to him. So I kept going with it, and it looks like it worked, but it's risky. When he does that portal attack, you just want to sit in the middle, and these skulls will come to the left and right of you, and you just want to whip them as they come down. Just save your sub-weapons, just whip. And then he goes back to his normal patterns where he's floating around without the portal. But this is it! This is our final stage in the game! And the phenomenal theme of Simon plays, which, uh, originated in Castlevania 4. My personal favorite Castlevania game, which you guys have heard me gloat about many times. So you've got these guys that, uh, basically shoot darts at you. And you just want to duck under them. These guys will... ...use those axes, like so. And we're going to go ahead and just pick up as many hearts as we can, because they're going to be useful later on in this level. 
There's gonna be a stopwatch I'm gonna intentionally switch to later on, which is gonna make life, uh, I think a lot easier in the last couple of rooms. So we're, this is basically the final stretch, guys. We are on the final stretch. I'm gonna kill this guy. Unlike some other enemies, he won't respawn. Uh, these guys with shields, they basically just dash at you really fast. You need to just duck and attack them. I'm just gonna keep ducking these attacks, like so. And if I wanted to... Oh, here he comes. When you hear that noise, you know that uh, one of them's gonna dash in from the side. And I'm actually kind of being dumb right now. I don't actually need to come this way. It's not the preferred way. But we'll go ahead and kill these guys, just because we can. Yeah, so there's a cross right here. Which I probably should get, but... My axe is at, uh, number three. I basically have the third no Roman numeral, which allows me to throw three axes on screen at once. See, what's interesting about these guys is they don't respawn like enemies like the Hunchbacks or Skeletons do. Uh, we're gonna actually take the bottom route here first. And the reason for that is there's gonna be, uh, some wall meat. I'm gonna go ahead and kill that guy. I'm gonna go ahead and kill these guys, too. And there's a dagger right there, so I don't want that. But I do want the meat. Alright, so this is a tricky room as well. Basically, the whole place just catches on fire, and then you got the chandeliers start falling down to the ground as well, and they do damage to you. So you want to watch out for those. And these guys, it seems to be best to deal with them by jumping and di uh, attacking diagonally downwards. Just like that. They'll die in one hit if you do so. Just like that. This section can actually be really, really tough if you just let those guys overwhelm you. Um, but I figured out the, the weakness the other day, and it's just the diagonal slash is what does the trick. So, just like the original Castlevania, this is that familiar section, uh, which is actually the start of Dracula's final stage, or the final stage in the game, which is Dracula's stage. Um, but in this, it's more, more so halfway through the level. But just like in the NES game, there's going to be a stopwatch to get. Fortunately, the bats seem to be pretty easy to take out in this. They, they're much larger than they are in the original Castlevania. And we're just going to use the stopwatch. So this is actually tricky right here. The very, very tight jumps. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. It's okay. So what I like to do is just get on the edge like that, be hanging about halfway off the edge. And we're going to be relying on our stopwatch for this next room here. We've got killer maids and more panthers from the very beginning of the game. I'm trying to do as much as I can without the stopwatch. Ah, screw it. We're just going to use the stopwatch. Why not? We only have one more screen after this, and a maid's gonna fall down just like that. Ooh, I still took a hit. That was my fault, I just jumped right into it. Oh, and we're dead! Because I didn't use my stopwatch like I should have. But that's okay. Now we need to have skill, guys! I don't look at, like, using things like the stopwatch as not having skill. I, I, I mean... Having a plan is a, is a certain degree of skill. Um, you know, there's people that try to play games like these, and they try not to use any power-ups or anything. But then, in that case, you're not using the tools of the game, to, you know, you know, to your advantage. And if you're having trouble with the game, you should try to use the tools of the game to your advantage before you start playing all risky and, and you know, before you start trying to show off. Well, look at that, an herb. Let's go ahead and... We're gonna keep this just for this next screen, just so I can get my hearts back, just in case I take a hit or something. Which I probably will, because I don't have the stopwatch now. 
These guys, um... Those maids are just... When they shoot their projectiles out, which fortunately they didn't do because I attacked in time, um, it just turns into multiple tinier homing fireballs. Now, we're not gonna actually use the, uh, herb. I should probably just use the herb and tank, but I'm not going to. We're gonna just go ahead. I wanna show you how to defeat this guy, uh, the proper way, if you die. If you die, you, you checkpoint back before this boss fight, and you only have this cross or the holy water. I highly recommend the cross. And what we're gonna do is, like in some other Castlevania games, try to hit Dracula in the head, but in a downward fashion. So we attack not just his head, but we hit his fireballs that come out, too. That is one of the tricks to this Dracula boss fight. Just like so. Now, you can get stylish and actually get another hit on him, just like so. So you can actually get two hits on him. Oh, I mistimed that. Just like that. And if I wanted to, I could try to get even more stylish and use the cross on him. But I like saving my cross ammunition for his second form. He basically turns into a big beast, just like he does in the first Castlevania. This is gonna be our last hit, right here. And we need to figure out where he spawns from. He can spawn in different areas. He's gonna go to the left, so what I'm gonna do is just throw my boomerang, like so. And I find that just being very offensive here helps and works wonders. If you see him doing his fireball attack, you can actually jump over it if you time it right. Now you also gotta watch out because he will sometimes... ...sometimes reach out. Just- ooh! Oh, Oh, he was about to do his reach out attack, and I killed him just in the last moment. We would have died if he actually, if his full attack came out, we would have died. Uh, so that was that was great. We we got it. Um, yeah, we got it. First try. That's awesome. So there you have it, guys. Castlevania Chronicles on the Sony PlayStation. This is the North American version we're playing. Um, there are some other things I didn't really mention in this game. You can use uh, a controller input to access a, a hidden sound menu, and you can basically change the sound hardware of the game. So, this game was originally on a Japanese computer that had different sound hardware you could have equipped, you know, in, in the computer. Um, and so you get to emulate the various sound hardware from that computer system. And we're basically just using the what what this game defaults to for the, uh, the background music and sound. Um, there's some other cool stuff in the game as well I haven't really mentioned, and also, if you guys want to see a range mode, um, uh, you can check out my old Let's Play of that game, I'll link to it, uh, either in the comments or the description, and, uh, I might even do a, a re-record of that, you know, so people can see a range mode with, uh, you know, the higher quality Frame Meister capture and, and things like that, um, but yeah, if you're having problems with the game, I hope that this video helped you, and, or, you know, and if, even if it didn't really help you immediately, hopefully it gives you some motivation to go back and play through this excellent Castlevania game. Um, it really is a fantastic game, and, you know, like I said, there's a good reason why some higher level players in particular enjoy this one um, more than pretty much most Castlevania games out there, if not all of them. So... Uh, it is not actually my personal favorite in the whole series. Uh, that that goes to Super Castlevania 4, uh, and then Castlevania 3, and then I still love the first Castlevania on the NES. I mean, I, it's it's kind of hard not to put that one at the top of my list, but this is still a fantastic Castlevania game. I highly recommend checking it out uh, if you can. I think it might even still be on uh, PlayStation Network. You know, the original disc is going for a lot of money now. You're looking at $70 minimum. Uh, even for the Japanese version of the game, but uh, it might still be on PlayStation Network. You might still be able to grab it as a PS1 classic for like six bucks. Uh, I don't know its current state of it, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Um, but uh, many years ago, last I checked, it was it was still there. Hopefully, it is still there if you have a PS3 or or uh, something like that. So. But that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, as usual, I want to say thanks for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed this Let's Play. Um, uh, I think I might actually have a couple more Let's Plays for October. And also keep in mind that I'm doing live streams twice a week 
during October. So Tuesdays, uh, I've got live streams. And then Thursdays, I've also got live streams. We're going to do Castlevania Symphony of the Night one of these uh, Thursdays. If I haven't done it already, I'm not sure when I'm posting this Let's Play. Uh, but stay tuned for those. And as usual, guys, if you want to check out other Castlevania videos on this channel, simply search for Castlevania on my main channel page. Just go to my channel page, search Castlevania, and you'll find probably a couple dozen videos related to Castlevania. I've done most of the 2D Castlevania games on this channel, including the handheld ones, um, and I'm revisiting a lot of them as well. Uh, thanks to having my my upscaler and going through RGB and stuff like that, uh, my uh, higher quality capture setups. You'll get, you guys will get to see more Castlevania videos in the future as well. Uh, so if you're a fan of Castlevania, definitely subscribe to this channel if you're not already. Um, and if you're already subbed but you're still kind of new, feel free to search back to that back catalog and check out those other Castlevania videos. Uh, so thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it once more. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, take it easy.